Okay, good morning, dear students. This is teacher Wilman once again. Yeah, I hope you're really doing great. Hope you're okay. Um, okay, uh, this video belongs to unit number 10, which is the last unit of the book. It's what we are working on. Remember last Saturday I told you that I had to make a video explaining the pronunciation and the writing part. So this is the video and we're going to start with the pronunciation. Okay. Um, in this pronunciation section of the book, we're going to study intonation of tag questions. So it basically means the way that we, that we should like, the way that we should say the tag question at the end of the sentence. I hope you remember tag questions because that was a topic I, I think that you saw in fourth level. So I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take all the, the, like the tag question uh, in the grammar part, but I'm gonna do it just in the pronunciation, okay? Because I know that it's something that you already know. So intonation of tag questions. So it's when a tag question follows a statement to which a speaker anticipates agreement, both the statements and the tag questions are set with falling intonation. Those are the statements here. That's why you can see like the arrow that is going down here. So the main stress in the tag question falls on the auxiliary verb and not on the pronoun. No, uh, if it, there is generally no pause at the comma. So what does this mean? Okay, let me read the second one and then I explain what, what the difference is. It says, when the tag question represents a genuine question to which the speaker expects an answer, the statement is said with falling intonation, but the tag question is said with rising intonation. Okay, what does it mean? In the first example, it is, it is just like saying that um, when we say a sentence and then we want to anticipate agreement or, or it's like like we say that that question just to to confirm information just to anticipate okay it's like you already know the answer but you just do it in order to anticipate an answer so in that case the, the intonation has to fall okay but in the second one in the second examples when it talks about a genuine question, it is like like when you say the sentence and then you use the tag question in order to ask, okay? A genuine question, a real question. You're making a real question. In the first one, it's just to, to anticipate agreement, okay? In the second one, is a real question that you're making. You just, you, you want the, the speaker to answer that, okay? So we're going to listen, we're going to listen, uh, and we're going to see what the difference is in the pronunciation, okay? So in this part, we're going to listen. Listen and practice. One, it's really shocking, isn't it? So it says, it's really shocking, isn't it? Isn't it? So the intonation falls. It's really shocking, isn't it? It's really shocking, isn't it? So in that case, it's a genuine question. Two. It's not really surprising, is it? It's not really surprising, is it? Three. It really makes you feel angry, doesn't it? It really makes you feel angry, doesn't it? Four. They'll come up with a solution, won't they? They'll come up with a solution, won't they? She didn't speak out against that project, did she? She didn't speak out against that project, did she? So as you can see in these examples, they, they were pronouncing both uh, both intonation, falling in and in, in rising intonation depending on the on the intention of the speaker. So I'll repeat again. 
when the speaker anticipates agreement, as he says here, anticipates agreement, then the intonation has to fall. But when the speaker expects an answer, or is a genuine question, then the intonation it, it the intonation rises. Okay, so uh, we're gonna listen to the follow. Okay, we're gonna listen to the following tag questions. Try to indicate if each one anticipates agreement or expects an answer. I know the answers are here, of course, as I usually do it. But the idea is that you can just like ignore this bar. We're just gonna hide it here. We're gonna ignore this bar, and then I'm gonna show you the answers. So in this second part, we're gonna listen, and you're gonna say if it anticipates agreement, which which means that the intonation has to fall, or if we, if if it is expecting an answer in which the intonation has to rise. Listen to the following tag questions. Check to indicate if each one anticipates agreement or expects an answer. One. That's really appalling, isn't it? Two. He's worried about his children, isn't he? Three. It really makes you feel good, doesn't it? Four. It wasn't really true, was it? Five. They're going to do something about that problem, aren't they? Six. It's not really important, is it? Seven. You heard that on TV, didn't you? Eight. You'll support us, won't you? Okay, we're gonna listen one. Now practice saying each tag question aloud. Okay, we're gonna listen again. We're gonna listen again, and and you can confirm. Okay. Listen to the following tag questions. Check to indicate if each one anticipates agreement or expects an answer. One. That's really appalling, isn't it? Two. He's worried about his children, isn't he? Three. It really makes you feel good, doesn't it? Four. It wasn't really true, was it? Five. They're going to do something about that problem, aren't they? Six. It's not really important, is it? Seven. You heard that on TV, didn't you? Eight. You'll support us, won't you? Now practice saying each tag question aloud and listen to... Okay, so we're going to see the answer. In the first one, obviously, it is anticipates agreement. So it means that the intonation falls. The second one is also anticipates agreement. And the third one is anticipates agreement. Number four and number five are expect an answer. And number six anticipates agreement. And the last two ones are expect an answer. Okay? So it means that in the first one, we say that's really appalling, isn't it? Isn't it? The second one, isn't he? The third one doesn't it. And in the in the fourth one it says, was it? And number five is aren't they? And number six is it. And number seven, didn't you? And number eight, won't you? Because it expects an answer. So the intonation, uh, like let's say it goes up, which, which is rising intonation. And in anticipates agreement is falling intonation. Okay? Good. So this is basically what we're gonna see in unit number 10. So about our questions, it's something that is really good to take into account, uh, that you should take into account actually. Okay, now we're gonna go to the, to the writing part, which I think is really important here. So um, we're gonna say this. In this writing part, we're gonna keep working on essays, okay? So uh, in unit number nine, in number nine, we were working on essays. Uh, I hope you remember like the topic sentence and the thesis statements that every, everything had to be like linked. Uh, the topic sentence, 
the topics of the topic sentences in the paragraph in the supporting paragraph they they should be included in the thesis statement of the of the of the thesis so but in this case we're gonna see we're gonna see something a little bit different which is a uh, how to write a rebuttal um, essay okay it says when writing a rebuttal to an opposing argument or point of view support your ideas by presenting them one by one following following it's an um, is an outline to organize your essay effectively. What is the difference between this essay to the other ones? First of all, in this essay, uh, we're gonna write our opinion directly. We're gonna state, my opinion is this one. In the other essays, maybe you, you obviously you can say your opinion, but you don't say this is my opinion, okay? Because you, you usually write it in, in third person. And that's the difference in this one. Because in, in this one, we can state our opinion, like directly, like this is, this is what I think. But the idea here is that you oppose something, that you reviewed something. Like for example, we're going to see first like the, the body, and then we're going to go to the example. It says introductory paragraph, as so all the essays, they, they must have a, an introduction. It says explain the issue and summarize the opposing point of view. Include a thesis statement studying your own point of view. So we're gonna see the example. This is writing model. There are many people who feel that globalization is causing more problems than it is solving. So this is the this is what other people say. Globalization is causing more problems than it is solving. And I say nevertheless, or you can say like nonetheless, you can just use a contrasting conjunction here. You say like nonetheless, nevertheless, you say it is my opinion that overall globalization has contributed to a better world. So in this case, you have an uh, you have an idea here, but you have your opposing argument here, which is globalization has contributed to a better world. That's my opinion. Okay, you are stating that in your in your essay. So we need to accept it is a reality of today's world and do what we can to make it work for everyone. So it's just to complete the paragraph, but the idea is globalization is causing more problems and it is solving and your point your opposing point of view or your rebuilding point of view is globalization has contributed to a better world. That's why you say it is my opinion. So what's the idea here? The idea here is that you start saying the idea that you want to oppose and then you use a contrasting conjunction. You say like nevertheless, nonetheless, or on the other hand, it is my opinion that, and then you say, or you say, sorry, on the contrary. Say, so it is my opinion that, or I think that, overall, organization, globalization, sorry, has contributed to a better world. So you say, what, uh, like your rebuilding idea, which is your thesis statement in this case, okay? Your thesis is your point of view. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, in the supporting paragraph, it says, each paragraph state one aspect of the point of view you're rebuilding. Use, de use details and examples to support your point of view. So in this case, we say critics argue that, then we use a conjunction. Critics argue that, or, or scientists uh, have said that many countries have not bene benefited as much as others. All the same, we shouldn't blah, blah, blah. And it's, it has been argued that globalization has increased the spread of disease, blah, blah, blah. You start talking about uh, each of the aspects of the point of view that you are reviewing, okay? So in the concluding paragraph, which is usually the same, it says summarize your point of view. It says clearly globalization has areas for improvement. Even so, I believe the advantages of globalization far outweigh the problems. So um, we're going to see this in detail uh, using this. The writing... Uh, let me let me do something here with the with the outlines of the essays we're gonna sorry let me do something here we're gonna we're gonna try to compare these two outlines the outline that we normally use pay attention this is for unit number nine this is the outline uh, then you write a thesis statement which is uh, the topic that you're gonna talk about in the whole essay and then you have Topic sentence one, topic sentence two, and topic sentence three, if you're writing a three-body paragraph, and then the concluding, or sorry, the conclusion. 
But this is a normal essay, which is to have the topic sentence and then, sorry, the thesis statement and then the topic sentence for, for each paragraph. But in this one, in the rebuilding argument, uh, sorry, rebuilding ideas, I don't know what's going to, I think that I didn't rest enough. So pay attention. In the introduction, you have your point of view of globalization. Your point of view on globalization, and then you have opposing point of view. So you have two different things here. Like, for example, you talk about globalization as something bad, and then you talk about some good things about globalization. So you are, you are basically opposing two different things. It is the same topic, but two different points of view. Okay? But now, in the following paragraphs, you're just not going to do it like, like the topic said, no. Then you're going to say, support your point of view. In the first one, you're going to say for one thing, and then you start talking about, you start developing, okay, the ideas that support your point of view. And then you say, for example, or according to, uh, let's say, according to Dr. Graham, uh, globalization uh, has contributed for the world in the way that blah, 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 blah. And then you say, present and refute an opposing argument. It can be argued that, Blah, 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 globalization has contributed for a better world because this and this and this. And then you say, in spite of this, globalization has also caused many bad things in the world. For example, many animals are dying because of... And then you start saying, okay? So as you can see here, the, the, the two S's are, are a little bit different, but we're not going to focus on, on unit number nine because you already know how to do it. We're going to focus on unit number 10. So I'll read it again. It says, outlining an argument. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you this material. I'm going to send you this outline so that you can just like, just like have it as a guidance and, and, and write your, your ideas here. It says, uh, oh, once again, you, ha you, need to, you need to have two opposing points of view about one topic. In this case, the book is suggesting globalization. So you have... A, a point of view in you you have a forward point of view and then you need to have an against point of view so you say globalization is good for this uh, however it can also be bad because of this so two different ideas two opposing ideas about one topic and then you start supporting your point of view then you say for one thing uh, a globalization is considered uh, it is good because of this and this and this. For example, last year or two years ago or three years ago, um, uh, let's say um, it was show that globalization caused a, an improvement in in some bacteria. For example, I don't know. I'm just inventing. And according to and then you mentioned someone. Okay, and for example, and according to are are those. Uh, those kind of conjunctions that we're going to use in order to like to hook the reader's attention, like to convince people. Because with an example, I suppose that, that you're going to, that you're just going to mention a real life example. Then you're going to talk about, and according to, you're going to talk about someone that really knows about it. So people is going to be like, okay, you're using a, like, like real information. So this, this must be true. That's what people is going to say. And then in the second paragraph, you're gonna say you're gonna in the second argument, okay, which is another paragraph, you're gonna present and review an opposing argument. And say it can be argued that it's eleven and, o'clock. And then you say, yeah. You you say it can be argued that uh, globalization, blah blah blah, and then you say in spite of this, then so you can see in spite of this is an opposing argument. Okay? So you're always opposing the two points of view. Okay, but what is important here to clarify is that in the introduction we need we need to state the point of view and the opposing point of view because if you don't have two opposing ideas about one topic then you cannot do the essay. Okay, and the in in in, in the concluding paragraph, which is the last one, we're just gonna write. Uh, you're gonna summarize your ideas. Okay, you're gonna summarize your ideas, um, and that's it. That's what that's what. That's what you need to know about this writing.